Hi guys, welcome to this next video in this Escape from Goblin Town painting series. So today I'm going to show you how to paint Bilbo Baggins. One of the most challenging parts of this model was its actual size. You can see it's a very tiny model. And when compared with the other two models I previously painted in the series, you can really see how small it is. It's around the size of a two euro coin. But anyway, it was still fun to paint, so grab your paints and let's get started. As with all the previous models in the series, I first prime with Citadel's Wraith Bone. If you don't have the spray, you can use it from the pot. Just make sure you thin it down and give it two thin coats. So the first colour I put on the model is Contrast Work Flesh. I use this for the vest and the inner clothes areas. You can be quite messy here. Just make sure you cover all the vest areas and the inner clothing. Once that's dry, apply a second coat of the same colour. For the trousers, I use Contrast Wildwood. Again, two nice coats of this, making sure to cover all of the trousers area. I use the contrast paints for these because the areas are so small, so to get nice quick and easy highlights, these paints are brilliant for this. For Bilbo's jackets, apply two thin coats of fist in red. Don't forget to cover the inner parts of the jacket and the collar too. Just be careful around the other clothing areas you previously painted. Base coat all the skin areas around the model, the face, the hands, the legs and feet with Bugman's Glow. For the hair, I use two thin coats of Carrick Stone. Don't forget the wee hairs he has on his feet.
also decided to use this color for the scarf. Apart from the sword, that's most of the base coat complete. So now I will do a little bit of shading. First, shade the hair with serpent sepia. Just let the shade fall into all the recesses, soaking up any excess with a damp brush. Do the same with all the flesh areas using ripened flesh here. Again, soaking up any excess with a damp brush, just if you see any pearling anywhere. For Bilbo's jacket I shaded it with cardboard crimson, a nice coat of this and don't forget the inside of the jacket. We don't need to shade the waistcoat of the trousers because we use the Citadel contrast paint, so that helps save a little bit of time. Finally shade the scarf with a little bit of Agrax Earth shade, just be careful around the other clothes. So for the first highlight I used Cadian Flesh Tone for all the areas of skin around the model. Just leaving the darker colours behind in the recesses, just pick out all the raised areas. Pick out the raised areas on hair using the shabdi bone. Just try to pick out the individual hairs with a small brush. Take your time with this and just do as best as you can.
So for the first highlight on the jacket, I use Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, thin down like most of the paints, just cover all the raised areas. Try not to get any of this paint into the creases or the folds on the jacket. Just give it a nice even coverage. You might need two coats of this. Just take your time with this and slowly work your way around the model. Once that's dry, do the same except this time use Wild Rider Red. It's going to look a bit orange when you're doing this, it's very bright while the paint's wet. But as long as it's thin enough, that red undercoat will start coming through once the paint's dry. Just do the same as you did previously, though this time focus a little bit more on the raised hair. Base coat the sword with lead belcher next, two nice thin coats of this, then once that's dry, shade it with null noir.
I decided at this point to brighten up the skin a little bit, so I hit the extreme raised areas with Kiss the Flesh, just to touch some places like the nose, the eyebrows and the chin, and a tiny little touch on the cheekbone. To highlight the sword, I used Iron Breaker, just hitting the raised areas and the middle part of this. If you don't want to do the glowing effect I do later on on Sting itself, then you could just skip to the basing section of the video. So this was the first time I attempted any type of glowing effect on any model and about halfway through I didn't really like how it looked so I changed my mind on the colour. I didn't edit it out because I wanted to show that look you make mistakes but you can fix them as long as your paints are nice and thin. If you don't want to see this part of the video just go ahead to the 25 minute mark and you'll see how I finally finished the sword. So after changing my mind I decided just to paint the whole sword blade with Calvar Blue.
to highlight this blue, new blue sword, I decided to add a little bit of Celeste Grey to the previous Calgar Blue mix and highlight the extreme edges and the middle of the sword. Next highlight, I added a very, very small touch of Ceramide White to the previous mix. I repeated the same highlight, only this time focusing a bit more towards the end of the blade. And then the final highlight for the sword, I used pure ceramide white, quite thin down, and this time focused it even more towards the very tip of the sword and the edge. Once that was dry, I then shaded the whole area with Drakenhof Nightshade. Just move the shade around until you get the effect you're after. For the base, I used Citadel's Sterling Mud, it's a texture paint. Just using a small spatula, I just made sure I covered the whole base area. You can use any basing material you want at this stage. I then placed a couple of stones into the mud that I got from outside and just used the spatula to move them into the position I wanted. If you see any gaps at this stage, just go back in with a bit of your basing material just to cover any cracks or any areas. Once the whole base is dry, I give it a couple of hours at least to dry and advise you to do the same. Paint the whole base, including the rim, with a bad and black. Just give two nice thin coats of this, allowing each one to dry in between.
once that was dry, I used a small dry brush and dry brushed the whole of the base using Dark Reaper. And then once that dry brush was dry, I then shaded the whole base with Null Oil just to give a couple of extra shadows. So here you can see that I'm just imagining where the light from Sting would fall on the rocks and on Bilbo's cloak and perhaps a wee bit on his hand. I actually purposely chose this stone because it had a nice flat edge. So it'd be a nice area to sort of test the sliding effect. All the paints for this process though are thinned down a lot more than usual. Almost about two parts water to one part paint. It's important you do this so you don't just get a big blocky, blocky colour effect. So firstly using thin down Aldorf card blue, I glazed the rock, Bilbo's hand and his jacket with a thin coat of this paint. Allowing each layer to dry in between, I did this I think three times. You can see that nice effect starting to come through. Next, I thinned down in the same way some Calgar Blue. I repeated this process, just mainly focusing on sort of raised areas on the small rock and towards the edge of his jacket. Then I added a little bit of Celestra Grey to the Calgar Blue mix, again thinned down and repeated the process, only slightly more focused this time. For the final highlight then, thinned down some Ceramide White into the previous mix and then just paint the very extreme edges. Just keep building this effect up until you're happy. That's the point. You're supposed to be happy with it. And that completes the model. Listen, thanks so much for watching, guys. It would mean a lot if you could like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss some of the upcoming videos. Join me for the next video when I paint Thor and Oakenshield from Citadel's Escape from Goblin Town series. Thanks a lot guys. Bye bye.